guys, welcome to Anderson's TV uh, and a very exciting uh, guest today, Josh and his team from JHS Pedals. We shall be jamming. We may have already jammed. I don't know how this is going to get cut. I'm not sure what we did. Um, and Josh, as you probably know, makes pedals, fine pedals, amongst other things. Uh, and you're a bit of a geek when it comes to these things and you're, you're quite um, absorbed in the history of pedals. And so I thought, as you're in the UK, I'd like to know what impact did the UK have on pedals? Because I think we all know we didn't do a lot for guitars, but we did a lot for amps. And pedals, I don't really know. What, yeah. what did we do? First of all, I love how you described me being absorbed in pedals. It's a good, I'm going to have to remember that. So UK, England, like the importance, that's what you're kind of getting into. Yeah. Did we make anything important as far as pedals is concerned? Yes. Crazy important. Okay. Um, so the first, you know, the first guitar pedal is manufactured in 1962 in Kalamazoo, Michigan, the Maestro Fuzz Tone. And this is hard to imagine, but there was no Andertons doing international shipping. Wow. There was no Amazon, eBay, you know, reverb. And the fuzz pedal was really new. They made a few thousand, sent it into dealers. Like I even have this record where it like, you put it on, it's like the demo, first guitar pedal demo ever. It's fascinating. And they're like, the new sound of the Maestro Fuzz Tone, make your guitar sound like a trumpet and things like that. So they don't really have this, this rock and roll thing's not there yet. And some people start using it. They sell about 3,000, two or 3,000 to dealers. Nobody's really buying it. Now the story goes, that Macari's was down on Denmark Street, yep. like number 22 there, and um, session guy supposedly goes over, has one. Now, the reason that's significant is, like I said, you couldn't really order things. Nobody, it wasn't so connected. We can yeah. be on Instagram and you guys post something and I see it immediately, but we're thousands of miles apart. And this guy had one of these pedals. A few people knew about him. You see John Lennon. There's a photo from Abbey Road. I think it's 63. He okay. has one. So like prominent people had them. And this guy didn't like the sound of it. He was. He said it doesn't have enough sustain. Could it have more low end? You've heard the maestro. It's like mm -hmm. a can of bees piercing your skull. It's really bright. And a guy in the back modifies it, Gary Hurst, and creates the tone bender. Right. So Sola Sound is formed, um, this fuzz pedal, the tone bender, and that's 1965. And the British invasion has started 1964 for us Americans, uh, you know, the Beatles on TV, mm -hmm. huge. But this thing in London is, to me, the most important moment in rock and roll history. You have these kids growing up, John Lennon, all these British artists listening to Elvis listening to blues, they're over here, and this fuzz pedal thing happens, music starts to change, and they take our American music, and they create this British rock thing with this fuzz, and, this, and the tone bender is yeah. front and center. Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, just endless names, could go on and on, and they create this British rock sound. Jimmy Page, right there, bring it back over. So there's this really interesting... The fuzz pedal comes from America. It's not really that great. Mm -hmm. It gets brought to London, made amazing, and then the world's changed. So it's a huge deal. You have Solar Sound. Um, yeah, whatever. Because I don't, I mean, I know the tone bender, but that never yeah. became really a, like a, a, a range. Or, and Solar Sound, I, I imagine yeah. most people aren't familiar with that. Yeah, so Solar Sound, there's Macari's, which is still on Charing Cross. Is it Charing Cross? Cha yeah, Charing, Charing Cross. Yeah. Charing Cross. Charing Cross Road. Charing Cross Road. A great Road. store if you're ever in London. Yeah, so that was Solar Sound. They came up with a name for this pet. They wanted a company. They knew there was something going on there. Mm -hmm. And they start selling them. There's a Mark One. There's a Mark Two, a Three. There's all kinds of versions. And as that kept going, they wanted to evolve this even more because there's more pedals. So Mr. Arbiter um, is in London, and he wants a fuzz pedal. He looks right. and sees the base of a mic stand, and says, "Let's put a fuzz circuit in a circle and make it a face, fuzz face." So that's '66, the year that Hendrix lands here. Very convenient. 
and that's London. Right. So Hendrix, you know, comes from Seattle. So, so the, Once again, you guys took an American thing. But the Dallas Arbiter Fuzzface then yeah. is the who was credited with the circuit in that? So or is that a bit unknown? Uh, the circuit history to that is really fun. Right. How nerdy do you? I'm nerd. Okay. I love that. I mean, okay. you guys can just fast okay. forward if you want. Yeah. To. <laughs> Feel free to fast forward. All right. Feel free to fast forward. So there's a guy, um, Vox Jennings is on Charing yeah. Crossroad. Yeah. I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Vox Jennings, and there's a guy named Dick Denny that works in there. Now, Dick yeah. designed the AC-30, the AC-15, and Mr. Jennings hates distortion. Right. And Which is really ironic when you think about yeah. over rock and roll history, like Queen and an AC-30. Yeah. Um, he hates distortion, but this Dick Denny guy was constantly tweaking and inventing and there's a legend that he took like a tin can to basically like the little little flavoring thing and makes us like these cans people had laying around, builds this fuzz circuit in it, two transistors, and starts showing it to people. And they don't really buy it. Mr. Jennings doesn't like distortion. It's their goal to make the AC amps as clean as they can be because <laughs> it's jingle jangle, hold my yeah. hand stuff. And that circuit is exactly the topology of the fuzz face. So the first advertisement we see for Vox Jennings with this silver, it's a long silver plug into your amp called Vox Distortion Booster. Right. That is the fuzz face circuit. And the first ad for that is, it's late 64, early 65, fuzz face is 66. And there's also a third wheel to this, which is in the 90s, a collector in somewhere in, I think, I think he's Swedish. Right. Um, Dennis Johansson, he has a tone bender collection. He opens up one that he thinks is a Mark II, and it has two transistors. A tone bender has three. Right. So there's this discovery of a 1.5. Or a mistake. Yeah. But, <laughs> but Gary Hurst worked with Dick Denny, and right. Gary Hurst was the tone bender designer. And for some reason, there's this two transistor tone bender that was made for a few months, Gary says, and guess what it is exactly like. The, fuzz the, face. the Dick Denny yeah. Vox circuit oh, okay. and the fuzz face. So there's these this connection there of who's credited for the fuzz face. I think it's Dick Denny. Right. Some people would say, who knows? I kind of quite like that relatively early on, people are t people are looking at the form of a pedal as as important to how it's going to be yeah. perceived and marketed as the actual insides of it. Because that round That's fuzz genius. face is just, it's one of the most iconic and he, he was really genius. So, so Mr. Arbiter was the guy who designed the logo on the Beatles' kick drum. Really? He was very visual. He was a retail guy like Jim Marshall. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he was just visual. He was all about marketing and that fuzz face. So we see Hendrix in New York with a Maestro Fuzz Tone. We see him with a Marshall Super Fuzz, but he gets a fuzz face and keeps it. And I like to think it's just how it looked. We had some I'll get stoned over that. No, comment, we, we had some email exchange um, yeah. recently because I saw this this was this is so super weird. Like on a on a Facebook group that I'm a member of that's about Guildford, the town that Andertons is in, somebody said, look, here's a clipping from Melody Maker in 1967 where my dad or whatever wrote to say to them say, how does Jimi Hendrix get his sound? And Jimi Hendrix wrote back in a, in the clipping. And he talks about a a fugs freak fuzz or or no a fugs fuzz that was part of like a freak group i think he refers to yeah. fugs as from greenwich new, new york city yeah. west village greenwich village so and i googled fugs fuzz and couldn't find anything so this proves that you're a super nerd well i just got, i went who's this the is, mega nerd this is like deep uh <laughs> this is this is deep illuminati fuzz stuff <laughs> this is where like there's 0.1 percentile who've even heard of this so yeah fugs there's if you go to like Spotify or Apple Music, you can listen to the Fugs. Right. It's not great, but they're a band, and it's it's very much the genre. So like in this era, you have like Cafe Wa and these like clubs, and you have like Dylan and the protest movement, all these poets and beatniks. They were kind of this strange like psychedelic folk group, and apparently uh, one of the guys I can't remember his name, um, he would tinker with circuits. And there's a fuzz circuit. Um, I have never seen a picture. I've, I've scout, I mean, I interview people constantly, talking to people all over the world. No one's ever seen this pedal. But Hendrix says he had a fugs fuzz oh, 
man. And this would have been 64. So with no connection to England, nobody knew Dick Denny here. Yeah. Nobody in New York really. I mean, Vox was probably, there were some amps. There's a lot of mystery. That is in someone's garage or someone's loft attic, or isn't in it? Land, Somewhere. Or in a landfill. Or in a landfill. You know, maybe. if it really was <laughs> DIY, then it's maybe made a few. Maybe yeah. Hendrix had one of three or four. And this, this was happening, which is really weird. So the Maestro was actually designed in 1960. It was an accident from a yep. country music session I've in 1960. Story, Glenn yeah. Snotty goes and makes the circuit to replicate the broken board. And I just interviewed a guy in Beverly Hills who was there when the wah was invented. And I'm back in there prowling in his room. He's in his, his 80s, I believe. And he just opens a drawer and shows me this metal box and he made a fuzz. And the pots, I looked and dated it, 61. And he didn't even care. He didn't think it was cool. And I'm drool I'm like drooling and sweating and holding this. Like this is this is really crazy because the air everyone wanted fuzz and people were making these DIY things. So this fugs fuzz. So you think fugs were know. a band then and when so when, when there, he, I mean I've listened Right. So when yeah. Hendrix says they were a freak group, he doesn't mean like a group of freaky people. He a means group. like a band that they, probably made their own fuzz modded fuzz. Yeah. They were a band cool, that you listen to when you've had enough drugs in your system. Well, if, if the fugs are on Spotify, they're going to get a royalty check soon for about, or maybe even a dollar off the back of the number of people who are going to go and listen to them after watching this video. This is what so we do here on this show. Yeah. Um, I, before we, you're probably looking at the, the, yeah. the mess on the table. It's all, uh, these are modern, these are some of the, the British guys who are doing pedals now, but. Not if, these. No, but before we, before we get there, Tell me, I mean, I think of people like Roger Mayer as a real pioneer. Oh, huge. Uh, and Color Sound. Yeah. But what, what were they, a little later? So let's or? Pat, like, say Tone Bender 65, Fuzz Face 66. Mm. 67 is the Octavia. Right. Uh, Roger Mayer has this prototype. He meets Hendrix. Uh, the story is he said he walks in probably bag of nails and at the club and, hey, check this out. And then Hendrix plays it, gets excited, and brings Roger and the pedal to the finishing overdubs of Are You Experienced? Wow. So this invented box, and then he hires Mayer to travel. So Roger Mayer's there in 67. Then you have, the okay, the da so Dallas Arbiter Fuzzface, the Range Master was 66. That's huge. Rory yeah. Gallagher. Yeah. Um, that was a Dallas product, the Range yeah. Master. Yeah, that oh, was here. That. And that was... A failure of concept because they wanted to brighten up darker marshals and things to be like Fender. But what happens is you plug it into a dark Fender and you crank it and it's like, it's a distortion. It, it was, you know, mm. technically not what they wanted, but it's I legendary. I wish I'd known now. I wish I'd known then. Because I, I met Ivor a few times before he died. Really? And he, he much older than I am, obviously. And, and I never really... I just saw him as a guy who was the head of a big distributor. You know, they had Fender at the time yeah. and all kinds of stuff like that. I never really, very like, bit of a cliche sort of older guy drove his Rolls Royce everywhere. But I never knew, I'd have loved to have asked him about all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and it's like he didn't play guitar and like a lot of these founding people didn't play guitar really. They, no. they had an engineer that worked with them and did things and they put products out and, that, and he was a distributor. Yeah, like you said, he... Just wanted to make a product. Mike Matthews, late 60s. He doesn't play guitar. He just right. saw these effects, and it's kind of wild. Like, a lot of the founding people are just businessmen who were hearing fuzz all over the radio. Now, I also kind of think to myself, after that sort of early, that sort of period of pedal making, so you're going through, you know, three or four quite well-known um, British concepts and, and manufacturers there, yeah. then it all goes a bit dark in the sense of sort of going and I, I, until even some of the brands that are on here reappear yeah. that, that almost seems to be just a total i don't really know what that happened in the set but you know boss mxr ehx you know they kind yeah. of just dominate so what happens is you have 72 73 mxr comes mm -hmm. out of rochester new york mike matthews has started 67 69 he gets huge with the big muff you have all the dod stuff happen yeah 84 Color sound is started, or like the first ad I think is 1970, and that is Solar Sound. It's Macari's. Right. Okay. And you can go there, by the way, and they they make mm. these nice like reproductions, really yeah. great. Have a lot of legendary English builders making them. 
but they you kind of go through the 70s and boss releases the compact series in 77 and absolutely destroys everyone mxr yeah. goes bankrupt right. early 80s mike matthews goes bankrupt right. uh electroharmonics dod survives because they switch to the silent uh boss style switching and all these the clicking switches yeah, anyone yeah. who had a clicking switch in the early 80s died right everyone wanted the fet like the clean bypass no popping and so boss it's absolutely boss bankrupts and makes companies completely disappear and yeah i mean i know we're going to talk about british yeah. stuff but just because i know i will i won't get the opportunity to ask you all this stuff if i don't do it now um so was was boss uh, on day one, an entirely sort of Japanese design subsidiary of Roland, or was it for a while its own thing and that Roland then acquired? Yes. Yeah, so ba- so Roland's first pedals, there are Roland pedals, the Biba, you ever seen those? Big yeah, silver exactly. pedals. So Roland had pedals 70, I think the catalog is 73, 74, and they have uh, the first flanger, one of the first flangers ever, there's a story where they don't even know what flanging sounds like. The engineer is told to design a flanger, and it brings him to tears because he's trying to design an effect he doesn't know what it sounds like. There's, like, crazy stuff because it's – Japan starts taking over when, with Roland specifically, and then they tinker around with making a little bit of a smaller unit. You've seen, like, the Boss CE1, the yes. big horse. So yeah. the early Roland stuff was big right. form like that. Yeah. They start using the Boss name – not quite a moniker, but like another way of uh, approaching, maybe these effects are getting big. And then in 77, they create the Compact Series, which is the Spectrum is released, the Green Phaser, and the RN, uh, the Yellow Overdrive. Two oh, the, they did that thing of three yeah, pedals like the recently, didn't they? Run, yes, when they put yeah. that out, I mean, the ads show it fitting in the flap of the guitar case, and it's silent switching. And it's, it's beautiful. It's never yeah. been done better. And when that happens... And that was originally called Meg, by the way. There's the actually br- the some, brand was called the Meg. Bo- boss the boss was um, the guy over. Ro- How deep do you want to go here? The guy <laughs> over Roland. Uh, basically, he's starting to develop this thing called Boss. It's originally called Meg. They said ah, this is a little too feminine of a name. Yeah. And they go to Boss because it feels like we're the boss. You know yeah. that thing. They do those in '77. And then from that point, it is like complete world domination. And so they very intelligently stumbled into, like they knew what they were doing. And um, wow. and now I still think, there's some great looking pedals here, mm. but I, I know several of these people and they'd probably say with me, like you can't really, the boss is so perfect. The form. Uh, that's the, my, yeah. you know, when I started playing guitar in the eighties and uh, I had no recollection of. I didn't even know there was an alternative pedal brand. It was just you just bought Boss pedals. There was. Well, I mean, or, I, I remember there being some plastic, like Arian maybe had yeah. some. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Alternatives, like the but plastic, cheap Japanese yeah, stuff. Yeah, but it was Boss. That was it, wasn't it? Just Boss would, was, and for and for quite a long time, probably all through the nineties as well, and uh, or maybe maybe one or two of those sort of pioneering, yeah, what we now call boutique brands, you know, like like uh, Full Tone or Keeley or whatever yeah. started to sort of appear then. But um, hey, if we do the whole potted history of pedals, we'll be here all, all right. day. So let's talk about all these guys and that they are standing on the shoulders of the giants who've come before them, but they're all making a success now and they're all British. Yeah. And I wondered how many of these you you know you were familiar with. Maybe I could tell you a bit about a some good, of these you, pedals. Yeah, you can. I'm familiar with a good bit. Uh, most, I just interviewed him Michael I'm going to do Hudson. something on my show about, I love this. And then I'm very familiar here. Um, we're pretty good buddies. And so the designer of these is the designer of the brand who made, you know, the big cheese and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So um, that's a big deal. And I think that's where British pedals came back on the map for you guys. Yeah. It's like when Mike Fuller started Full Tone, and you got Analog Man, and you got Robert Keeley making the compressor, selling it on Harmony Central, and that whole thing started. Mm-hmm. You have over here, um, you have Love Tone. They kind of jump on the scene, the big cheese, the the 
all they have so flanger with no name, all kinds of great pedals. So that that company ended, and he's doing these for th designing them for Thorpey. It's because there's two. I think um, there's tons. Yeah. Well, th isn't the two that the guy from Love Tone done? Are the t they're just the two that he's just released, aren't they? The um, he's been working on several things, but the the right. newer ones are directly That's like, right. hey, the, these the are Love Tone throwback or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah, and he's they're yeah. they're purposely throwing back, which is really well, awesome. I, yeah, I don't know who. So we've got yeah, we've got. But I know these. I had the big giant compressor yes. that was like the size of this table. Yeah. Uh, what have we got? Hampstead, who are mainly an amp brand, but they have a couple of pedals they've started doing. Ranger. I love um, and David. I did. I've known him. It was so small. I glanced the, over it, but yeah, these, I know him. These really well. are honorary mentions because although they're they're made in England, but uh, designed by a, an American chap, so they're sort of they are made in England. Though. Um, or the cer internal circuits were kind of designed. Yeah. I don't know who this guy is here, but uh, he's a loser. Anyway, he's a loser. Uh, and and Stone Deaf, which is a, I can't remember Luke's surname, but his name Luke is based out of Manchester. This is amazing. The, the graphics alone. Yeah, so I could have turned that on and it just went like meh. So I would have loved it. Well, we'll start with because yeah. we did send. So Luke, I first met um, Luke. He's quite a young guy. I say young guy. He's probably the same age as me, so not that young. Might be a bit younger than me. You're in your 20s. Um, exactly. Um, extra large JHS order next month. Um, he was an automation engineer, and the okay. first stuff that he started doing was all uh, stuff where you, um, what do you call it, like, where it's, where the knobs move when you've got different settings. So like, oh, um, yeah, yeah. and he made some amps like that, but I'm not sure how much of that, there's a couple of pedals he does now, but he just does these really, as you say, cool graphics, kind of unusual fuzzes. They've mostly got these um, mm -hmm. expression pedal inputs so that you can sweep, it's got like, sort of like a semi wah wah kind of effect, but where you're sweeping the frequency yeah. as well as the fuzz. The gate was really cool. Yeah. Not that we've already jammed. Not that we've already jammed, no. no we don't do or, it or, that way. Um, spent three hours trying to figure out how to do a two minute jam. I Another model of this, I think, in New York City right. somewhere. But I'd, I'd never played this. You picked it up. Love it. So they're cool. Yeah. Um, I suppose, I mean, Thorpe's the guy I probably know the best. Um, this Dane one is a little weird. Who I is know. the Dane? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I mean, the Dane is that, like... What is that? Is Denmark even a real place? Isn't that just. Know. Wasn't that just what in is Frozen, this image? the movie? Um, honestly, to me, I think it just likes the tip of something. I'm not sure if we can put that in. Yeah. <laughs> so we know Thorpey, and I must admit, I love um, <laughs> Thorpey. Is, recover. Give us a moment. Okay. Thorpey is one of those guys where you just go, he had a, yeah. he had a pretty successful, well, successful is that the right word, but a, a, a pretty a long career in, in the military. If you can be successful in the military, I suppose you can. He well, achieved, he was. He achieved a fairly serious rank and got lots of medals yeah. and stuff. Uh, and then just decided to do something else. And I know, congratulations, Thorpey, because he's just made it through to um, the final three of, a, of a, an award that the armed forces do for people who have a successful career after they finish in the armed forces. And he was at the House of Lords the other day picking up an award or something. So congratulations, See, when I hear that, Thorpey. I feel like I've done nothing. <laughs> I've never even been to a House of Lords. I don't know what that is. He it's, got to go there, he got a medal. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the first... He's not been doing this that long, has he? Maybe in maybe was it five, six years ago that the warthog came? No, the um, 
the one that had to change the name? The Muffroom Cloud. The Muffroom Cloud. And then dear old Mike Matthews That's served it. the kind of anybody using the word muff. Apart from you, got away with it. Um, everyone else who was using the word muff had to change their, their pedal name. But he did the Muffroom Cloud and it was a fantastic fuzz. Very well received. Maybe he's gone he won't on. watch this because I'm really enjoying still making the muffalo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and now we do tons of Thorpey's pedals. Really like him. Yeah. Um, he's he's a class act too. I, yes. I get along with him so well. Yeah, really, really lovely guy. And also as well, I think could probably bench press probably both of us. Maybe everybody in this room in one yeah. go. So I would say because of Thorpey. the military background, he could kill us easily. I think he probably could. Yeah. He could certainly create an explosive device that would uh, destroy yeah. uh, most of Guildford. Um, <laughs> the next one, now you probably know more about Michael than I do. Yeah. Because the broadcast, we started selling two or three years ago. I've never been in a situation where our stock control system doesn't have like 200 Hudson pedals on back order. L literally that many. It's a great pedal. And like periodically I phone Michael and I go, you must, like, I don't even know what you look like, you know, but you must come in and like talk about your pedals and do it. And he's terribly nice on the phone. He's always like, oh, yeah, definitely. We'll definitely do that like that. And then it's like, hangs up. I don't never, ever, <laughs> he probably just goes, I'm not going on that show, that's for sure. With but that these, back order, he doesn't need to. So exactly, he, but does, he doesn't need you. That's what you have to understand. So how, how does somebody, yeah, how does somebody approach a pedal, a fuzz pedal that has been done a billion times, and yet somehow carve out something where guitarists seem to unanimously go, "Oh, that sounds different to anything else I've tried before." Yeah. How yeah. do you even do? So, or is it just is it just luck? No, he's he's clever. I first saw this, so I dropped the color box, British spelling. I just want to. The what the what box? Color box. Oh, color box. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I dropped that and I did the first demos at I think did them at Abbey Road in 2012, I, I, somewhere around there we released it. And then I, you know, the concept of that was the DIN kind of uh, Abbey Road uh, EMI Neve sound, no amp. Can you make your amp sound like that? I thought that was crazy, and it was. And we did really well with that. So as I'm American doing a British sound, I saw this come out. He's British, and this is based on an American pre. So right. it's like the bizarro world of the color box. And then I remember I got this. I just loved it because fuzz pedals are generally fuzz faces or tone benders or big muffs, just to be honest. Like in your, sh and we all make, I make mm -hmm. something of all of those. What happens is a pedal like this falls into the category, which is like, maybe you hated fuzz and this is what you like, or maybe you love fuzz and this is very different. And I think it's just, it's just different. And I, that falls into different camps of people and just look at it. It's That's wicked looking, it isn't it? I mean, it sounds amazing. But I'm the kind of person I would buy that and like decorate my living room with just a pedal. Which jam did we do with this one? Was that we, the third, uh, second one? We the third uh, one? we haven't played yet. We haven't jammed yet. Okay. Well, I, well, we should. Don't forget to plug this in in one of the jams. No, I we think what we're going to do when we play. I'm, mm. First of all, I'm going to put my sweatshirt back on. Excellent. And then um, we're going to do like a like a like a Sonic Youth kind of yeah crazy uh, noise. Can I play bass in that one? You play bass? Not really, you're, but you know. You're in, do you have like a mediocre guitar player that could join us? Uh, we've definitely got a mediocre guitar player. Yeah, yeah absolutely. What? Is he okay? Like one to ten? Just, I mean, don't make eye contact with him. But uh, <laughs> you know, four and a half maybe. Okay. Okay. We can let him in. Can Just you? Just let him in. Yeah. The guy's doing sound over there. Can you turn him down? We mix him out. Okay, it's fine. Um, so anyway, so broadcast is super super cool. Uh, it's Ariel awesome. Posen has done a signature pedal with these guys, but it's it's yeah it's just it seems to it's got a fatness to it that some fuzzies don't have. But anyway, there we go. Yeah, the tone can, it's so good. The tone control is super shapeable, and it's just yeah. I think what's so great is it's not a fuzz face, not a tone bender, not a yeah. big muff. Yeah. So it's awesome. Michael, if you're watching. I'm formally inviting you again to come onto Anderson's TV. I so. don't work here and I'm inviting you <laughs> to come here. Um, let's do... So, there we, we, these make some uh, reasonably yeah. uh, bold claims. Cures all known bad tones. So, I, in fairness, Rob and I had an idea about two or three years ago that, you know, we should 
make pedals, jump on that bandwagon. Right. But what do we know? We know what we know what pedals we like, but we don't. So we we got yeah. a guy called um, Zach Broyles from Mythos, Love him. and we batted some designs back and forth until we came up with a couple of pedals yeah. that we sort of sounded great. And then we just had a load of fun making. This is all like, um, is it called Victoriana? I don't know if it's called Victoriana, but like you know those old medicine posters that you get where you know Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Uh, Jones from well, like Aberystwyth. Miracle Swiss. Tonic. Yes, she ate three lumps of charcoal a day and it My, cured her cancer. This, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually took a knob off earlier. Mm. These are real brass knobs, weighed ten pounds per knob. <laughs> <laughs> Probably cost ten pounds. Let's do this well. a little bit. Well, if you want to do that, what a great segue. Yeah. This is where you want to do that. I mean, you can you can oh, generate some real guns with. Uh, so this is a, a chap Crazy. called Simon uh, from Origin Effects, another Bucking. kind of slightly mad scientist from Bucking. Yeah, there's a palace there. Is there is a palace. Apparently. So American. Um, but uh, so he got famous with the Cali 76, which became in almost, almost, I want to sort of, don't want to upset anybody here, but it almost outdid the Keeley, you know, for like, is this the compressor? It's not the Keeley compressor anymore. It's now the Cali 76. It was the first new style guitar presser in like decades. Yeah. yeah. Um, really expensive as well and almost set a new kind of um, limit as to like, well, just how crazy expensive. A new limit? People. Yeah. Limiter. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it's almost like, so what? People are going to spend three or four hundred bucks on a pedal now mm -hmm. are they it's like I never nobody knew that you know and then, then almost other brands have almost well in fact yeah he again did even bigger pedals that cost like six or seven hundred bucks and people still buy them just goes to show I suppose it's, it sounds good so these are very cool I think um yeah I had the slide rig that's the one I had yes great very cool yeah and then uh over here we got James Hampstead who uh now James when I met him he's another guy that's basically had a career completely not in guitar amps. Sorry, James, if I've got this wrong, but I don't think you play guitar either. But he was some astrophysicist, nuclear scientist thing. That so just, these are guys who are way smarter yeah. than us. And he's looked inside a guitar amp one day and just gone, what moron designed that? Yeah. You know, it's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why, but, but from a, a pure scientist thing. He's a better guitar player than the guy we're gonna probably have jam with us. Much. Though. Yeah, he's yeah. Def, he's def, yeah, he's a solid he's six. He's a guy. six and he doesn't even um, play. Doesn't even play, really, no. Yeah. Um, so Hampstead, a beautiful, beautiful, you know, expensive uh, handmade British guitar amplifiers, and yeah. he has a drive pedal and a, and a tremolo pedal, which you, we should plug one of these in, in the jam. I think you'd like it. Not that we've jammed, but I love, I loved it. Yeah. Good for you. I mate. need to jam, do the actual, I need to play it first to know that I love you it. You should do. Well, definitely okay. remind me to make sure you plug this in in the second or first jam. First jam. Um, first maybe. jam. In, definitely in the first one. Then, so this guy, another guy I've never David not Ranger. Met, David Ranger. So this is this is the stupidest arrangement that we have here. So we don't we can't even buy the pedals from David. I have to go to an American yeah, company. He, he lives in London. Yeah. To yeah. buy the Ranger pedals to then I don't in fairness I don't think they're shipped to America and back I still think they're shipped to but I I've never but met David defense, and he looks super they're cool. so good you're doing that yeah but he, so David you need to come on as well but you've met David and he looks I, like a lot of fun he's to hang like, with he's my best friend here in right. this country right now I love him I did the Who Is Ranger we went and interviewed him he lives on Baker Street wow as an American what, with Jerry Rafferty no Sherlock. Oh, Sherlock. Come on, man. Sorry, I knew that. Pounds, Madam Two Swords. Pounds of Baskerville. <laughs> um, now, he his... surely stole the show at this year. Oh, well, yeah. in fairness, what's his background? Because, again, he's another, you know, slightly more mature chap. He's obviously been doing things with his life for he a few years. He has a really cool story that yeah, what's his apparently story? you didn't watch the episode that I did. I don't watch any Ranger. of your YouTube videos, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm too busy making my own ones. <laughs> I haven't got time for anyone else. You don't YouTube sit channel. around and watch everything <laughs> like me. If you make any YouTube con content, I've seen it. No, in all fairness, you, you, you have. He a actually, he actually was. He worked in like early marketing in some magazines. He was telling stories about. He would got like the whammy pedal and would write an right. article. He was kind of in that world. He's done a lot of stuff, but he thinks nothing like me or any other pedal builder I've ever seen. So at Nam, he puts out this yes. this enclosure. Although I thought it was a joke. 
like, because I do stuff like this that doesn't work for, like, jokes. But it has a little cup, and you pour liquid, put a cap on it, and the liquid changes the sound of the overdrive. So, and it works. It's like witchcraft. I mean, they, they, I, that is my biggest regret of the 2020 NAM show is as we're leaving, you know, and it's finished, someone goes, yeah. did you check out the Ranger thing with the thing? And we're like, yeah. what? No. Uh, so so we've ordered it's them. It's genius. But to, to just, is the, um, what do you call it when a, is it conductive then? Is the liquid that goes in conductive in some way and so yeah, you're mean, getting a sick, or is so it just like something like- It's a like really the great weight. overdrive distortion circuit and liquid is conductive and different liquids have different conductive natures slash resistance. Yeah. So that change of the liquid, there's fancy words I'm acting like I know. Yeah. But like the change of different liquids will cause that part of the circuit. For sure. To the gain in the circuit. It's just crazy. It's such a brilliant idea. It's brilliant and simple and yeah, only he would think of it. And so many yeah. inappropriate YouTube uh, concepts will come out of what Kinds oh. of liquid we can put in the pedal <laughs> to see how it sounds. I'm now, sure I know already, you want to see that. They've already been made, I'm sure. Well, we're going to make them again. I think he's sold a jillion of them already. Oh, yeah. Because who wouldn't want one just to see what happened? What are they? Well, there you go. Look, uh, check them out. Check them out. So I, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm a, if there's another. There'll obviously be other British pedal manufacturers that, that we haven't mentioned now, but I'm hoping we haven't sort of forgotten anyone who's like, well, certainly no one that Anderton's buys lots of pedals from. I hope we haven't forgotten I, those, I've, I was thinking really hard. I am incredibly jet lagged and tired, but I was looking in the cabinet. I think, I don't feel like we've left anyone out. If we have, I'll forever feel horrible. So come on, yeah. your pedals, we should talk about, how long have you been making pedals for? Since 2007. Okay. It's so weird that, isn't it? Like 50 years ago. Yeah, no, but it feels, um, it feels like you're like what part of the establishment in the sense of like... Is that good? Um, Define establishment. Well, as in, you know, like one of the, the main guys who uh, make pedals. I mean, you know? I... Maybe 2007 is a long time ago. They say feel, that's what happens. The older I feel you get, really fortunate goes. to do that, to do what I love, have a great team... And yeah, we just keep growing. I'm always wondering who's buying them. And I just try to have fun and, and you sell lots of them. We do. Yeah. And, I, and I'm kind of intrigued because, you know, you would, you're very, very, um, Be you're careful. very, very forthcoming and open yeah. about other pedals that have inspired you to do things yeah. and favorite pedals you've got and other makers and, and, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because the pedal community seems to do that in a way that the guitar and the amp community yeah. have never really done. But how do you, you know, when you're approaching, you know, it's pretty tough now to sort of think of a, of a, of a pedal that's come out in the last 20 years that was truly original. You know, it's it, really tough. You know, everything else is a, is a, is a, is a hopefully a, a take or an inspiration of something. So where do you... You know, what is it that you're looking at when you're, you know, you must have your favorite chorus pedals or your favorite delay pedals and you're sort of thinking, where do I go yeah. with this? It's really tough. I mean, the Ranger thing, pouring liquid into a pedal is amazingly unique. But even within that, it's an overdrive circuit yeah. that there's only so many ways to make a fuzz. There's only so many ways to delay things. And so I don't know if you've ever been on forums or the internet. I, I've definitely been on the internet. I don't remember looking yeah. at pedals. Well, it's tough because um, there is a there is a way of thinking that's really unhealthy, in my opinion. This is all my opinion. I'm not endorsing Anderton's way of thinking. But the way of thinking is if something's not new and magical, it's some ripoff of something. But the truth is the tube amp was basically invented, the circuit, like late 1800s. And then you have Fender making amps from radio circuits and Marshall using the Fender circuits and pedals like we just discussed. The Maestro is taken into Macari, is modified into the Tone Bender. The Fuzz Face is apparently this Vox. So it's everyone's sharing, yeah. tweaking. And I make a little series, I hand make them. And three of those fuzzes, they're on the same circuit board with parts variations and they sound wildly different but it's the same circuit. Yep. And so there's a real important 
fact of like understanding that when you go to look at things. And what I love is history, the stories. Why do we love the sound of something? Like a good example is I put out the bonsai. So nine tube screamers in one pedal. And I don't know that we haven't jammed yet, but I think the mediocre guitarist is using that. I'm not sure. It's uh, it does it generally make you better than you actually are? It takes a two to a five, right? And a six he's to a seven. He's definitely using that. Then. Yeah, definitely, so, definitely using that. One of the things that's crazy is like the concept people have about like I'm going to this for a reason. The tube screamer. Mm -hmm. I meet people and they swear the 808 sounds so much better than the nine. Mm -hmm. But it's like, is it that or is it that they were in this amazing band and they liked that girlfriend more and they had beautiful flowing locks of hair and wore leather and they had to sell that pedal because they got a day job and then in the 90s got a TS9 and didn't like their band as much. Therefore, the TS9 does not sound as good. Psychological things go on with pedals. And I just try to be really honest about these circuits come from here. These are the stories. Let's not get hung up on little things, is this the better pedal? What's the best pedal? There is no best pedal. Mm. And so what I've tried to do is like pull from these stories and make products that that come from these important stories of history. Like, why is this pedal cool? Because it's the Univibe and Hendrix uses it at Woodstock and there's a lot of Univibes. I put Tap Tempo on this, which I think is really cool, but it is Univibe. And yeah. I think if we're all just honest with, someone hates this because it has a picture of a unicorn on it. And they're not going to buy it, but they'll buy another Univibe, and they should go buy that one. Mm. And I think as a pedal builder, I just try to be comfortable and yeah. say, like, I, my pedals aren't for everybody. I hope it didn't come across that I was criticizing the no. sort of the morality of because if we're if you're all going to start going, well, you shouldn't copy someone else's stuff. But that design. happens. But then you yeah. go, the whole music industry would only have three tired. products <laughs> if you no, weren't how to copy that's, something. That's else. what I was approaching. Is it gets you know, really crazy? Yeah, I, it yeah. was more just the thought process yeah. of just going, you know, when there are. I mean, the, the tube scream is a great example. You yeah. Know, when there are 500 other tube screamers yeah. out there and you're going, mm, I, I, okay, there's a, people are asking me to do my take on the tube screaming. Yes. Where do you even start? Well, I you start, know, like, I just do what I want to do. Yeah. The bonsai is a great shout. So I, I took my nine favorite ones and yeah. instead of making a tube screamer clone, I made a clone of nine. Yeah, it's, it's a great nine idea. Nine is better than one. In fact, you probably didn't, I don't know if you watch any of our YouTube stuff, but that was the, the bonsai video we did was we blindfolded Rob and yeah. we were pretending to throw different tube screamers in and secret all we were doing was just clicking through. And, I saw that. Yeah. I watched your video. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, yeah. it's very, very cool. So what is coming from you? Uh, are we talking about the stuff that you did at NAM, or is there a secret thing that you can tell us that's maybe in the we have, development? We were talking is, about an the, idea. Yeah, can this we talk is about like that? Is that super secret. This year, I don't know. I don't know. This year for us as a company has some of the coolest stuff we've ever done. I'm most excited for this year mm. than any other any other year. And so, see, and that's I'm, what I want to do live on YouTube, semi live. Because we talked about, you did this cool thing for Sweetwater, didn't you? Where you yeah, did the, the 1966 the series, 66 which I was referring series. to, these classic yeah. pedals from 66. And Anderton started in 64. We've talked about some of the fuzz pedals that maybe came out. I'd love to do something with, with you where we deep dive back into, you know, some of those things that we talked about at the beginning and yeah. see if we can come up with some real, because I love the fact that on those 66 series, it's you sitting in your basement. You know, it's not like, mm -hmm. I know your team are obviously all very skilled and probably just as capable but there's more. something more capable yeah there's something about the, the ones that you do i think it i think it's the dodgy soldering and the um they, tendency they to break mix much the, quicker yeah, they break they're much lower quicker. quality <laughs> thus they cost more no <laughs> yes but i'd love to do something with you on that front i'm so into all this i'm so nerdy i love all this no it could be well. fun we'll have to talk yes because we haven't talked about it not really or jammed we definitely haven't jammed no. um At well all. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like uh, I'm feeling like this is reaching its natural conclusion now. This uh, and and I'm feeling like we should jam. Let's jam. Should How jam? about I just pick some things and we just jam. Random. We'll get Nick on the drums. Shout. Nick, you on the drums? How's the you? How's the Rubik's? Yeah. Done it? No. I can't solve it, and my soul is dead. <laughs> Rubik's. I think done that to a lot of people. Yeah. Where's Jason Richardson? We need to get him back in. He did the Rubik's Cube okay. in like He's two done. minutes. Can you do this? No. Let's jam. Okay, let's jam. Let's Everybody, 
Josh Scott in the room. Uh, Let's get that guitar player. You said you can play bass, Nick on drums. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's jam out. Anyway, man, it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you very much for coming awesome. over. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, trip down pedal memory lane. Uh, please tune in for the next video, and we shall see you probably tomorrow. Bye.